Hi, I'm Noel with Creation Effects, here to go over the texture generator for After Effects. And before I get to the tutorial, let me tell you really quick what it is in case you're not familiar with it. The texture generator is an After Effects template, and you can use it to create some really cool dynamic textures that can be composited over your footage. And it's a great tool for getting the dust and hair and scratches effect to make your footage look like old film. Or you can use it just to spruce up your video, um, you know, kind of give it some energy or maybe a grunge style. Um, or you can use it for transitions when editing. I'm not sure how you'd want to use it, but there's a lot of applications for it for um, the creative editor. So let me show you how it works. You can make your own textures, and I'll show you that in a moment. But the template also comes with 50 presets or pre-made textures that were made from the included photo texture library. And that texture library has 235 high resolution photos and they cover all kinds of textures like rusty metal, sketch pad doodles, um, lens flares, concrete, fabric patterns, all kinds of stuff. So that's pretty cool. You can use those for your other projects if you want as well. So in your project panel, you'll see the folder called texture images. If you open that up, you'll see all the textures organized by the subject matter of the photos. So we'll open up this bokeh folder, and you can see we have a number of photos of bokeh in here, as well as these two dynamic textures which were made up with these photos. And you could just drag this comp over your footage and change the blending mode and you'd be ready to go. But perhaps a better way of finding your texture is to open this comp here. This is the texture presets comp. And in here you'll find all 50 textures organized into categories uh, so you can see dirt on this title here, and all of these underneath are some kind of dirt or grime or grunge texture. And next you've got lines, and these are all the hair scratches or streaks. And there's some more categories, but you get the idea. Just unhide any layer to see what the texture looks like. Or you can take your footage and then put it way down here at the bottom, and then you'll be able to preview what any effect looks like over your footage. You can experiment with different blending modes if you want. And when you find the one you like, all you have to do is copy the layer and paste it into your main comp right above your footage. Now if you want to get in there and customize one of these textures, just open up the comp and you can do that by holding down the Option or Alt key and double clicking the layer. And you can see now that we have all of our photos here as well as this Control layer and this Effects layer. Let's look at the control layer, so I'll select that and go up here to my effects control panel and we'll see a bunch of slider controls and again these are organized into categories using these uh, titles and caps here and these are just slider controls, uh, they're not linked to anything so it won't do anything if you change it. I'll just keep that closed. And also if you're showing animation presets you may want to close those too. Just go to the little triangle icon here and uncheck show animation presets and then I'll keep things tidy and save a bunch of space. Okay I'm gonna just quickly go through all of these slider controls so you know how everything works. Scale is size obviously um, a value of 100 puts all the layers at 100 percent scale. Position wiggle works together with scale if uh, if we have a value of 3000 here that means the layers are going to wiggle around about 1500 pixels in every direction. So if your scale is set really high, you'll have more room to wiggle and you can set your wiggle amount higher. And the best way to see this working is to zoom way out and you'll be able to see the outline of your layers as they wiggle around. So if you see that the edge of a layer comes into a frame, you can decrease that wiggle amount and that'll solve the problem. Uh, frequency, that can pretty much always stay at 30. That's how many times per second the layer will move 300 pixels. Uh, turn on random rotation, that's on by default, which means your layers will constantly be randomly rotating. So if you have a texture that needs to be upright, like text, you can turn that off. Uh, same with random flipping. If you don't want your layer to flip over horizontally, uh, just turn that off. Random opacity is similar. It will, it will make each layer set its opacity to a random value from 1 to 100 and changing on every frame. Next we have these layer blinking slider controls and these turn the layers on and off randomly so that we don't see too much of a single layer. So there's a minimum on time, maximum on time, minimum off time, and maximum off time. 
And these values are in seconds, so you'll probably want to keep them low, like decimal values perhaps. So all of the slider controls so far have to do with controlling the randomness of the layers. And now we'll talk about these slider controls under effects layer here. The effects layer is this adjustment layer underneath the control layer. And it's got a number of effects in here, like uh, the photo filter and brightness and contrast and some others. You can control all of them using the slider controls on the control layer here. I'm not going to spend any more time on these. They're pretty self-explanatory when you see them. But let's go back to that effects layer. And you may have noticed that some of these effects are turned off. I've gone through and handpicked some effects that I thought looked good for each different texture. You can turn those on and see what they look like. Um, you may or may not find inspiration from these. A few of these are common to all textures, like this posterized time, which can slow down the texture by letting you choose a lower frame rate. There's this CC time blend effect, which will make the frames fade into each other, or invert colors to make the darks light and the lights dark. Um, and that brings up another issue. Let me find a frame here with a lot of dirt. OK, here we go. So if you're in your texture presets comp and you see a texture you like, but it's making darker marks on your footage and you want to make lighter marks, or vice versa, you can easily change that by going to Effects and then Channel and Invert Colors. And now the, the dark is light and light is dark, but the colors are all screwed up. So if you go back to Effects and go to Color Correction and then Hue Saturation, and then set this master hue to 180 degrees and that'll set the colors back to where they were. Now we still don't see the lighter marks here because the blending mode is on one of the darken modes. Uh, so set that to one of the light blending modes like screen and then you're done, light on dark. Okay, let's go over how to make your own textures using either your photos or the photos in the texture library. Just open up this folder called create your own and I'll find some photos here and just drag your images into the image comps. Just put one image per comp. And then you can open up the Your Texture comp and see it in action with the default settings. And you may need to change the blending mode so you can select them all and change them all at once. Or what you can do is, is select all the texture layers and then hit the shift key and the plus key together and then it'll let you scroll through the blending modes. Uh, if it's too dark or too light, you can play with the, the brightness and contrast as well or any of the slider controls in these effects layers section here or adjust the layer blinking controls to make it so less layers are showing at any given time. And it might be worth noting that these image comps are 20 megapixels large. If your images are bigger than that, you can change the comp size by going to Composition and then Composition Settings. If your images are smaller than 20 megapixels, you can scale them up to fit the comp, or you can scale the comp down, or you don't really have to do anything if you don't want. Uh, the whole texture will still show in your texture comp. So that about does it. Uh, if you get some weird error message, you may want to check out the website, creationeffects.com, and look up the troubleshooting notes and that might help you solve the problem. Or if you just want to check out some other really cool templates, that's www.creationeffects.com. Thanks.